The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, as we rounded out that week of trade action on Friday, the soy complex found a little support that held through the close. Uh, quarter wheat, though, not so much. Kind of just faded off the highs once again, testing some support levels, especially in D's corn now. A lot to talk about here. Let's uh, let's dive in and, and get some thoughts on the week of the market trade. Joining us for a conversation, Jeff French with Ag Hedgers is with us here today on Market Talk. Jeff, welcome back to the show. How are you, buddy? Jesse, we're excellent here. Beautiful day here in central Iowa. It's uh, we got a really nice weekend. Finally, uh, after being saturated here for the last three weeks, uh, we're going to be in the 80s and uh, guys are going to roll hard here this weekend for sure. Yeah, I'd have to think that uh, those planters are going to be running pretty fast and furious here to maybe do a little catch up on that corn planting here that's uh, pretty much half done across the country. Well, let's uh, let's talk this grain market. Let's start with corn. You know, it was it was nice while it lasted, but this rally's kind of faded here now, especially I think Dees corn kind of testing support at that 475 mark again. I mean, your thoughts, I've heard a lot of farmers selling on this rally here, Jeff and Corn. Is is that the case? Well, we definitely recommended it here earlier this week. And when you're talking corn here, Jesse, you really got to look at the wheat market. Because uh, the wheat market here in the last three weeks has rallied at $1.50 off the lows. That certainly helped the uh, uh, corn uh, getting anywhere from 30 to 40 cents off the lows. So, but we've seen it many times uh, in these markets, short covering rallies end very quickly. And this is what it was. You know, we had the shorts that were covering. Uh, they were going for the exit doors. Uh, we saw the funds here the last couple of weeks buy hundreds of thousands of contracts of short wheat and corn back. Um, and, you know, you look at these corn here this week, the high was 496 and three quarters. The market knows that it's just got an avalanche of sales up there at that $5 big round number. You know, I always tell my guys, do not sell those round numbers, sell two to three cents below that to make sure you get that order filled. But, uh, you know, we're sitting here mid-May. Uh, we still have the entire uh, summer growing season ahead of us. And you look at history, June, July, August is historically when you put highs in these markets. So uh, we, we, we have a lot of moisture on the ground right now. But it's a long growing season ahead of us. But uh, you got to have a plan and you got to act quickly because we are only up there at 496 for, for about 4, 45 minutes here this week. Yeah, and that's a great point. Is uh, be prepared to execute your marketing plan and and to your point, maybe uh, don't worry about uh, not you know maybe being two or three cents off of that actual target you want because these rallies can go away quickly. But again, seasonality to your point here. If you miss the boat, so to speak, this last week or so, it doesn't mean we're not going to see something else moving forward if we have a weather scare or anything like that. So, you know, make sure you're ready for, for the next sort of short covering rally here, Jeff, right? Yeah. And, you know, there might be some weather premiums, you know, start to build into this. I mean, the funds, if you look at, you know, their their job is to make money. And, and, I, and if I am the fund manager... Uh, I'm going, I'm looking here. Yes, we got three 90 days, three months of uh, heavy summer upon us. You know, do I want to be short 100,000, 150,000 contracts of corn? Uh, I just think it's very easily for us to spark a rally in this market. Uh, but you see here when, when we do rally, uh, absolutely, the farmer sold this rally. Hey, they weren't planting, so they might as well haul some corn uh, after a 40 cent rally. And that's what we were telling our clients all week here this week. You mentioned the wheat market, too. I know we had the Kansas wheat tour here this past week. Found a pretty decent average yield. I know some of the pockets where the crops didn't look as good, we expected that. Do you feel like that maybe weighed on some of the wheat trade activity that we saw here this week, Jeff? Certainly. Uh, but also, I think, you know, you saw that Kansas City contract pop up above $7. It actually got up to seven ten. That attracted a lot of farmer selling because, yes, there are dry areas, southwest Kansas, central Kansas, uh, but there are some areas that have had some moisture and have, you know, the wheat. You said the wheat tour. Uh, their estimate is uh, Kansas at 290 million bushels of hard red. Uh, that compares to 210 million bushels last year, and the USDA is down there at 260. So 
For a national, or excuse me, a state yield, they got it at 46 bushel to the acre compared to the USDA at 38 bushel to the acre. So the tour found some good wheat. Uh, we saw a big run up, again, $1.50 off the lows. Uh, and then the farmer responded as they should, and they sold the rally. But a lot of talk about the problems in Russia and the Black Sea region. I think about, you know, problems with Russian wheat and the thought of, will we actually ever really truly know how big that crop is coming out of Russia? I mean, uh, we kind of joke about it, but I, I think it's the truth. And, and I know that's been part of the uh, recent rally here in the wheat trade across the board as well, Jeff. Well, you know, there's one thing. I mean, the, the, the Russians know uh, one thing. They want higher wheat prices because they can flood the market quickly. And I think you saw some of that here this week. I mean, wheat, uh, when it uh, ran out of buyers, it was quickly down 50 cents. And uh, uh, again, we're not, you know, the world supply is tight, tighter than what it's been. I mean, we're at an eight-year low uh, for world carryout. Uh, the wheat is actually, if you look at corn and beans, the wheat might be one of the most friendly on a world carryout stage. Um, but there's a lot of good wheat out there and we've had the moisture. Some places actually you move it east into soft red has had too much moisture. Uh, and that added all into the rally when the funds decide to sh cover their short positions. Um, but again, uh, you want to sell your crop whenever, when, when the world wants it. Um, you know, typically you get those uh, uh, price rallies when it's the most uncomfortable to sell your crop because of a planting delay or hot and dry weather, but that's when you really need to take advantage of it. And, and if you don't want to sell the actual physical, you can buy some puts, you can sell some futures to lock in that price rally. How about the soy complex? Again, a uh, bit of a bright spot at Friday. We found some strength. Bean oils uh, kind of helped out here at the end of the week. What's your assessment of the, this overall uh, soybean market here as we round out the week, Jeff? Well, the bull the bull spreads were working. They were buying the uh, they were buying the July July closed up pretty good. You know, I, I'm we got to see here in the next five six weeks. But I you know uh, if this planting is truly delayed, I think it's even more bearish the beans because that will just end up more bean acres planted. In my opinion, uh, we don't know that yet. Uh, we got to wait here for the next four five six weeks. But uh, I I'm very cautious the beans. I I just the Chinese demand has been uh, uh, pretty much non-existent here lately. And, uh, you know, I'm just worried that with $12 beans, I mean, there could be, you know, a 10 in front of that here really quickly if the weather if works out and we have just a normal growing year. So I, I'm, I'm very cautious on the beans. Uh, we, we've had a really good run here for a couple of years, and I just think the beans here right now uh, could have some harder times price-wise ahead of us. Jeff, I want to make sure we have some time for livestock as well here today. A uh, good end of the week in cattle. Cash trade looked like it picked up pretty well on Friday midday uh, and looked like some spreading, you know, buying cattle, selling hogs a little bit too on Friday. But uh, your thoughts first in this cattle market as, uh, again, finding some green on the screen to round out the week on Friday. Good action. Uh, most contracts are up here at uh, uh, one month or two month highs, but you know, Jesse, I mean, May is beef month. Uh, it's the yeah. best demand month of the year. Uh, and finally, we're getting some weather that people can get out and start enjoying the, the grill. And we saw that respond in the cash market. And the cash market led this rally this week, and that's exactly what you want to see. You had choice box beef prices up over $20 a hundred here this week alone. So the retailers have come in here. They're, they're looking at the calendar two weeks away. You have the Memorial Day holiday. And here for the next two weeks, you have all kinds of graduations taking place. Uh, so you'll have a lot of cheeseburgers here that are going to be fired up here. And you saw that uh, with the box beef rallying over 310 a hundred here. So uh, I, I, there was some talk of 190 cash sales. Obviously, with the Packers, uh, with the beef prices going up as high as they are, uh, they have no problem paying up for cattle. Um, but uh, we'll see if that is confirmed here over the weekend. But I heard 190 cash sales here uh, today, which is extremely strong. With cattle uh, kind of rallying a bit here, and of course we had all the bird flu concerns that really impacted this futures market. If I'm a producer, am I, am I getting some sort of pr risk protection on here as we've had a really solid rally this week? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you look at the feeder cattle and, and we're trading August uh, quite extensively here right now. I mean, uh, the feeder cattle are up 10 to $11 off of last Friday's low. 
uh, we've pretty much gone straight up and we're right against uh, the resistance level of 260. Uh, we've only closed above 260 in that August contract once in the last two months. Uh, so that is psychological resistance. Absolutely getting some downside protection here uh, because you're right. I mean, this still is a headline risk market. Um, the cash market really didn't come down. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see, you know, the producer, it, the story's kind of old is what I'm kind of getting at here. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly it, it could rear its head. Uh, but I, I like the cattle here. I think uh, uh, with the demand the way it is, uh, hopefully it will continue. Uh, we might run this market a little bit more. Any notes for us in the hog trade? I know some folks have been uh, saying the hog markets looked a little scary here as of late. What do you think? You know, really good day on Thursday. It looked like a reversal higher after hitting, you know, two-month lows. Uh, but the market just gave it all back here today. Uh, we closed... Uh, sharply lower down a dollar 80. I mean, that's the lowest close that we've seen since February. Uh, so it just can't, whenever you think it looks like it's done, uh, it just gives it right back. So uh, the trend is clearly lower. And now that, you know, we're into the mid May, you might see the, the funds continue to sell this right into the uh, end of the month here. Well, Jeff, as we wrap it up, good stuff. Any uh, final thoughts uh, or anything you want to reiterate for folks here today? Yeah, I, I would just, you know, look at to the outside markets. There's definitely some caution uh, flags flashing here. You had gold prices hit all time high up over $2,400 an ounce. Silver up over $30 an ounce. That's 11 year high. So there is a flight to safety out there. Uh, there are people with uh, heavy influence that are very cautious right now with the general economy. And I look at the grain prices and yes, they're, they're lower than what we've had the last two to three years. Uh, but historically speaking, uh, these are still prices where we can see much uh, lower prices from here, especially if the weather works out here this summer. So, um, you know, take advantage of the rallies when we had them. Uh, we took advantage of it here this week with the nice 30, 40 cent rally in corn and then the dollar fifty rally off the lows in the wheat. So uh, when you have good prices, look to make some cash sales and buy some put options to protect the downside. Jeff, if folks want to reach out to you and uh, get some advice on their marketing plan, I know they can uh, find you online, give you a call, a lot of ways to get in touch. How can they reach you, Jeff? Uh, you can go on our website at aghedgers.com, or you can call us here in the office at 312-217-0122. With that, Jeff French from Ag Hedgers. Jeff, thanks for joining us this week on Market Talk. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Jesse. Have a great weekend. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.